Deputation has come from Stephen's camp to Parley. Arnulf of Hesdin! I am charged by His Grace King Stephen to demand your immediate surrender. Let the bastard rent all he will! We do not kneel before thieves and usurpers! You took an oath, all of you. You all swore allegiance to His Grace. We stand as we did! Empress Maud, rightful Queen of England! You cannot hold forever! Come then! Dig us out! In God's name! Hasn't there been enough slaughter? Yield now! Deliver the rebels Aidney and Fitzalan into the King's hands, and you may yet be spared! You have our answer, Corsell! Run back to the villain you serve, and pray that he receives your report kindly! I shall tear Arnold's tongue from his head myself. I give them land, position. Fitzalan, I created Sheriff of Salop. And now they sit in a castle, my castle, in this miserable dunghill of a town and pour scorn on me. Lord King, it is time to strike terror. So you have said, Captain Tenhate. Yet still, we are here and they are there. I promise. What we have planned for the morning will get your grace into Shrewsbury. Honor that promise, Prescott, and the office of sheriff is yours. Be assured, Arnulf, we'll not run and leave you to face Stephen alone. Aidney has already got his daughter safely away. She'll be taken to the Abbey tomorrow. But my treasury, that must now be got to the Empress Maud in France at all costs. It contains enough silver and jewellery to raise an army ten times Stephen's strength. My lord? I will undertake the mission. No, Giles. We will need every soldier here tomorrow. I've chosen two squires to make the run. They're completely unknown in this county. And how will they know where to find your treasure? The town butcher, Edric Flesher, remains loyal. You will escort them to Frankwell and show them where it's hidden. They can rest out the day there and make the run to Wales under cover of darkness. And who are these lads? Who comes up on the watch? My name is Giles Seward. I beg an audience with the king. I'm from the rebel garrison. Take him to the officer of the watch.
Ave Hesden. I fought you fair and looked to be treated with honor. As a nobleman of England and France, I am worth an earl's ransom. You were foul-mouthed when there were walls between us. I swore then to have your life. No earl's ransom can buy it back. You have my price. I find your price too high. Where are Fitzalan and Aideny? Sumus letantes. Converte domine captivitatem nostram, sicutorem in astro. Brother Catpile. Hmm? Brother Pryor? We were late to God's work. Uh, yes, but Father Abbott gave leave to take my place in the choir. Father Abbott's mind is distracted by the strife beyond these walls. Were it not so, he would doubtless have sought satisfaction. What delayed you, brother? Well, an old man needed his dressing change. Work for an assistant, surely? Ordinarily, yes. But events have robbed me of my usual help, as Brother Jerome is too well aware. One has left to take up arms on King Stephen's side, and the other has declared for Empress Maud and fled for his family's manor. Is not even this holy enclave immune from such conflict? But why should it be? Like castle and town, we are also besieged. But in our case, it's the innocent and the dispossessed. People least able to defend themselves. We have a duty to them. Do you tell me? Our duty is first to God, brother. Remember that. Leaving B. Leave him alone! How dare you raise a hand against this holy brother? Go on! Get back to your duties now! Go! It's hard enough keeping these bastards in check at the best of times. This morning one of them had his throat cut. Rebels, no doubt, fleeing for their lives. Well, Stephen has taken the castle. And those within? Your voice is familiar, brother. I feel I should know you. So you should, Sergeant Rees. But small blame if my name escapes you. Forty years have passed since we last fought together. At the fall of Jerusalem. No. You can't be. <laughs> can't fire! Can't fire! <laughs> Woman and a boy have business at the Abbey. Best let them pass. Kill! <coughs> Brother Cadfile, I have a new assistant for you. His name is Godric. A good woman of the town brought him in. Her nephew from Hencote. Both his parents are dead, so she says, and she asks that we might take him in as novice. I thought instantly of you, brother, that your labours may be eased, and agreed to have him. And I bring ten shillings as the gift to the Abbey, brother. Well, that was very thoughtful of you, brother. I'm sure the boy will do very well. Yes, well, he's in your care now, brother. Mm. 
This is my herb garden. Between the offices of the day, I prepare medicines from these plants for the sick in the abbey and the town. What is this place? Mm, my workshop. And for the present, your sleeping place. Certain of these medicines need tending regularly, some quite early. So there you have your bed. And unlike the novices' quarters, these doors can be barred. You may shut out the world, and myself also, until you're ready to come out to us. Daughter. I thought I could pass all trials. Child, I was 40 years about the world from end to end of it before I took the cow. What will you do now? What should I do? Help you as best I can. But you don't know who I am. A child, left forlorn here to weather the storm and to restore to your own people. Is that not enough? No. I'm a danger to anyone who befriends me now. Even to you. I'm daughter to the king's sworn enemy. My name is Goddess Adeni. Nick, what is it? The horse is lame. Caltrops. The path's covered with them. She'll never make it out of the woods, never mind to Wales. Look, go back to Edric Flesher's barn and wait for me. I'll try and find you another mount. I'll take the treasury. Somebody knows our road. of the garrison were taken alive. Apart from him, 93 in arms. Hang them. Oh, your grace. And at once. Have them all out of the world before tomorrow. Send for me, Father. Your Father Abbot is going this night to ask the King's leave to give Christian burial to the slaughtered prisoners. Ninety-four men, brother, dispersed off as animals. If His Grace consents, tomorrow we must take up their poor bodies and prepare them decently for the grave. You have yourself been a soldier. Will you take charge of this work? Yes, Father. Thank you. 
Get a press cop. I was told 94 had been dispatched on the King's orders. There are 95 here. One more or less, what does it matter? Traitors all and condemned. Am I to tear my heart out because the number does not tally? 94! You had orders to slay, but the 95th? No King authorized his removal. And whoever destroyed him is guilty of murder. An officer in the heat of fighting miscounts by one. One, mark you. And you make a murder case of it. He rebelled like the rest. He is hanged like the rest, and that, I tell you, is an end of it. No, he was not hanged like the rest. His hands have not been bound like the rest. He's in no way comparable. Yet someone took it for granted that we'd miss this one leaf hidden in the middle of your forest. My Lord Prescott, this man was murdered. It would be well if you could at least come and look at him. You have 95 dead here, and by my reckoning, that's one corpse too many. These are the keys to all our estates. My brother Giles should be here to offer allegiance. But when your grace assumed the crown, he took the empress side. It is rumored he made his way to her in France. Mistress Seawood. No blame may light on you for your brother's lack of wisdom. I hold your loyalty dear to me as that of any baron. But tell me what I can do to serve you. I understand you've made no provision for yourself as yet. I had hoped to stay at the Abbey. A sign of goodwill from the Abbot is long overdue. Captain Corsell, see that Mr. Seward is safely installed. Gladly, Your Grace. Bearing out of Maysbury at your grace's service, with all that I hold. Your name, Master Beringer, is known to us. That it was devoted to our cause was not so well known. As I hear, you have until recently been in the confidence of our vile traitors, Fitzalan and Aideny. I would be still, had they not chosen one way and I another. Indeed. Strange how many rallied to the victor's side when the battle is already won. I stand ready to prove my field to your grace. Say only where you would have me serve, and it shall be done. No. I think we shall consider carefully before welcoming you to our cause. Even more so when you are betrothed to Aidan's daughter. 
That arrangement was made on us when we were children. The times have changed a great many plans previously made. Should her father escape me, even at this late hour, she might prove a valuable hostage. You say you are ready to prove your fealty. Very well. Deliver the girl and you will not go unrewarded. He died strangled, like all the others. Yeah, so he did, but not by a rope. Look at the thinness of the cord that took his life. No man ever dangled from such a noose, and it runs level right round his neck. Fine as fishing line, which it may very well have been. Now, you see the edges of the furrow. See where it's discoloured and shiny? The cord was waxed to make it bite smooth and deep. Ah, like his nails. He clawed at the cord that was killing him. His hands were free. Did you hang any whose hands were not tied? No. There is nothing to be gained by making public so wild a tale. Bury your dead and be content. Sheriff Prescott gives free warranty to any who wish to claim their dead. Since there is one in particular whose identity is not known, he asks that all who come may view him. Also, be it known that any townsfolk found harboring rebels shall suffer penalty of execution. I think you found cause for distress in what you've just heard. If I can be of service. This is something only I can do. No other would know Giles' face. He can have had nothing to make him worth killing for gain. Friend, there are those who would kill a beggar for the few coins he'd made during the day. But when they see kings cut down more than 90, is it such wonder? Christ God. Aline, madam, should you be here, so desolate a spectacle? I marvelled you would bring her to face a scene so harrowing. I insisted on coming. Since he could not prevent it, Master Beringer has been kind enough to accompany me. I have a brother. I fled to Normandy, you said. He may have reached France or taken arms on behalf of the Empress with some company closer to home. Surely the garrison here were well known. The Sheriff's proclamation mentioned one not known. This is a most Christian service you're doing here, brother. Uh, Cadfile. Is this the unexpected one? So young. I wish I could tell you his name. Come, quit this sad place. Your brother's not here. How can I be sure unless I see them all? Giles. Oh, Giles. Mistress? Oh, dear God. Is this indeed your brother? If I'd known, I would have saved him for you. No matter what the cost, I would have delivered him. Oh, God, forgive me. You had your orders. How could you have saved one and let the rest die? Wait. Brother Cadval, I thank you for all you have done. But now I must take my brother's burial into my charge. Master Beringer, you have been very kind. property left behind in the guardroom at the end. This clasp has the same design as his buckle. At least let me restore this to him. I should be a decker. The Flemings wouldn't be above such vile thievery. Especially if it had some worth. Master 
you. Oh, to see a known and trusted face here now. If you're hunted, you're welcome to shelter. No, I'm in no danger. No, I only came to look for Goddess. To provide for her. Someone sent you? <laughs> no. But where else would Adini place her if not with her trusted nurse? Now, never tell me she wasn't here. Oh, we don't know. We can't be made to tell. Edric. I'm sorry we have no better news for you, lad, but there it is. Take heart. No enemy has laid hand on her yet. We pray none ever will. Then I shall put you in no further peril. God bless and keep you both. Hunting for his bride. None have claimed your unknown yet, then, brother. No. Well, if he was at the rebel garrison, you'll get little support from the king in seeking his assassin. And this is the man whose cause you choose to follow? We make our choices and we live with them. And you, brother, whose cause do you follow? My monarch is neither Stephen nor Maud. In all my life, I fought for one king only. To him alone can I look for absolution. You have no cause for approach, surely. I've looked on the faces of hangmen before, and your hands restored them some dignity. I have looked on things today that I hoped I would never see again. I once put all such horrors behind me, and gladly too. But for all that, you would seek his murderer. That duty belongs to better men. Good night, my lord. And if such men shrink from their duty, what then, brother? Good day, my lady. I was looking for Brother Cadfile. It's only I've brought these. My brother no longer needs them. They're still good. And I thought someone would be glad of them. You had a brother in there? In the castle? Oh, I am sorry. He made his choice. I was taught to think it was the wrong one. But at least he stood by it to the end. Brother Cadfael. You should not be here, child. Mr. Seward brought these. You recognize him? His name is Nicholas Faintry. He's a squire of Fitzalan's from Ellesmere. Ellesmere? Then what was he doing so far south? Fitzalan's business was almost finished in these parts. I know of some who may be able to tell you what he was doing here. But if you can be sure, no harm will come to them. Abbot Herobert. There is rumour of a man found murdered amongst my lawfully executed. I understand this rumour was started by a Benedictine. No one suggesting your grace had any part in such an act. It has obviously been a mistake, of course. How could there be a man dead there in some other way? He's there because some felon put him there to pass for just one among the many and arouse no curiosity. Be ashamed to make such rash accusations. Your Grace, if, if what Brother Cadfile says is true, such a person would need to know how your traitors were to be disposed. Well, most of the town, and certainly all the garrison would have known by nightfall, and this deed was committed in darkness. And how can you say that with any certainty? We don't even know his name. His name was Nicholas Faintree. Be silent. No, let him speak. Why do you say he was killed at night? I examined his body, Your Grace. A man's physical appearance changes post-mortem. There were signs of stiffening of the muscles. Also, he had been moved after death. Most likely slung over a horse. His blood, you see, had settled in his, his hands and his feet. Well, all the rebels were dispatched by late afternoon and none of them conveyed anywhere by horse. Naturally, there is nothing to implicate your craze. No, no. The murderer merely crept into your shadow for cover. Unfortunately, my army moves east in four days. I can spare neither the men nor the time to pursue this investigation. 
Oh, that is indeed unfortunate, Your Grace, because the Empress Maud's faction will doubtless seize upon your inability to act in this matter and offer it as proof that Your Grace cares little about justice. Faintry, you say? It is possible he had come here to seek service with us. You did right to report what you found. Pursue such inquiries as can be made. Abbot Herobert, you will present any findings at the feast on the eve of our departure. You have four days, brother. The two lads came at dawn. The day the castle fell, there'd been a, a council the night before. Fitzalan wanted his treasury taken to the Empress, whether he lived or not. Then all those who were at this council knew that there should be two abroad that night. Oh, but not where the treasure was hidden. Only Fitzalan and I knew the place. So if any had designs on the treasury, they would have had to waylay it on the road. On Fitzalan's own? Never. Two men riding by night could have been taken by robbers in the forest. No, this was no chance at all. Whoever killed Fane treated so close by the town to have time and means to conceal his body among the rest. This other lad who rode with Faintree, do you know him? No. He gave his name as Turrell Blund. More than that, I cannot tell you. You forget Edric. He came. Hugh Beringer. Pretending to be all concerned for Goddess and asking where he might find her. But there could have been no mention of Faintree's mission when he came. Nothing that made him prick his ears? No. He's very quick, that one, and very private. Don't let my lamb get within sight of him, brother. As hostage for her father, she's worth a fat commission. Never fear. I've seen that danger. He won't lay hand on her. Not if I can stop him. Recognized you? No, he didn't look at me. <laughs> that one took his measure of all of us. I have changed in five years. So is he, the renegade. To think we should have married. Well, until we know for certain why he's here, I think it best that you stay far away from the guest house, the stables, or anywhere else that he might be. Guys. I wouldn't give you much for his chances, brother. Yeah, I remember he was first taken like this in the Holy Land. If I give you instructions, can you medicine him? I suppose so. But you're wasting your time. No, he must be cooled when he burns and warmed when these chills are on him. Also, give him three drops of this twice a day. What is it? The Tarver Somniferum. Oriental poppy. Or at least the juice of it. Anything else? Yes. You can pray for him. A pleasant change from harvesting dead men, brother. Well, I hope we've finished with that kind of crop in Shrewsbury. You found a name for your stranger then. How was that? All questions find their answers if you wait long enough. 
Is there something here I can help you to? Or are you just curious to learn about these simple herbs of mine? I'd hardly say it was any simplicity I came to study. They say you had a wide-ranging career before coming to the cloister. You must find it unbearably dull here after such battles with no enemy left to fight. Well, I'm not finding it at all dull these days. And as for enemies, the devil finds his way in everywhere, even in cloister and church. Brother Catfile, you're the most practical of men in these parts. Should I have need of your help, you would not refuse it without due thought. I hope I never do anything without due thought. Now be easy, boy. Lie still while I see where you hurt. Nothing out of joint by the look of you. Nope, nothing broken. Where are we? Some small way from the abbey. <laughs> that was done by an arrow. You've been leading an interesting life lately, boy. Who was hunting you? King's men. Who else? I'm going to soak this bandage with betony. It'll help make the wound knit clean. Then you must eat something, but not too much. Yes, you're over-weary to make best use of it. I shall have trouble paying you back. A straight story buys whatever hospitality we're offering. But that can wait. <laughs> My name, at least. Your name is Toddle Blund. The rest can wait till tomorrow. For the present, save your strength. Or worse memory. Understand. I have sworn to die in the Empress's service because I believe the crown of this realm is hers by right. But you and Brother Catfell are no such allegiance. Indeed, the church has taken King Stephen's side, so why should you help me? We have a Christian duty to help any who need our aid. Then I'll not put you in further peril, brother. I am fit and strong. In my place, you'd have been out of here long before now. I would not. What use would you be on the run from here? No weapon? Your horse turned loose to baffle pursuit. How far would you get? You'd be carried back on Brother Cadaval's shoulders. Oh, would I so? A ten-year-old could lay you out. I'll show you, Master Godric, whether I'm fit or no. One hand of mine can more than deal with you, my lord. <laughs> Tell me. There was no need for you to know. Does Brother Catfell know? Of course. He at least can tell a heart from a hind. <laughs> and tell me, Mistress, who are you?
Broken off from a dagger's hilt, would you think? Not from yours, then. Mine? Where would a poor squire get so fine a weapon as this must have been? No, this is none of mine. Nor from fane trees? No. Where did you get this? Flesher's barn. I found everything just as you told me. This must have snapped off against the ground during your struggle. And it belonged to fane trees killer? Almost certainly. And it's the only thing we have that could lead us to him. If he still has the dagger. Oh, yes, I think he has. No one would discard so valuable a weapon merely because one stone was missing. No, he'll keep it safe until such time as he dare have it repaired. If we find the dagger, we shall have found the murderer. I should be glad to be the one who avenges Nick. Your part is to do your duty and get Fitzalan's treasure to France. Yes, and Aidan, his treasure too. You shall take Goddess with you, bring her safely to her father. All I have to do is to conjure two good horses out of the air, retrieve your treasure, and see you clear of the town towards Wales. Well, harder things are done daily by the saints. Godric, I think you and I must be getting back to Vespers. It wouldn't do to be late. Wait here. It has been of some service. Fair evening, brother. May we walk together? Uh, we are bound for Vespers. So am I. Uh, oh, uh, well, you, you run ahead, lad. Yeah, put that away. And then come to Vespers with the other boys. Go on. Most pitiful lad you have, brother. Uh, a year's endowment with us. Though I doubt if he's one to take the cow. You're at leisure today, my lord? Well, not so much at leisure as in need of your skills and knowledge. The king is about to order a tithe of provisions from all stores. And all, mark that, all the good horses are to be commandeered for army use. Mm. No matter who owns them. And the abbey will not be exempt. Mm. Bad news for Brother Pryor. It's bad news for me. I have four horses stabled there. No intention of losing my two best. Now, I want them somewhere they can evade Sheriff Prescott's foraging parties. Only the two? <laughs> you have more cunning than that, brother. If they find none, they'd hunt for all, and small chance I'd have left for royal favour. Brother Catfall, you know this countryside better than any man. Is there not a place I can lie up my horses safely for a few days? Now, be sure to surrender them to no one but myself, or Brother Catfall. Well, if you're ready, my lord, it'll be full dark soon. We have a long walk ahead of us. Have you ever contemplated marriage, brother? Yes. Once, before taking the cross, I had thoughts to marry. She was a very fair woman, was Richildis, but... I, to speak truth, I forgot about her in the East. And in the West, she forgot me. I was away too long. Have you ever seen her again? No, never. Probably has grandchildren by now. May they be good to her. Well, the East also had women, and you a young crusade. I cannot but wonder, brother. So? 
wonder. I wonder about you, too. A natural conspirator, I'd say. Yes, or well, one knows another. Oh, brother. I don't know if this has any bearing on the Faintree murder or not. But they're saying before the fall, a bodyguard was sent from the castle to escort Aileen's daughter out of Shrewsbury. Why should they think that? The king's men hunted a squire of Fitzalan's into the river, an archer took him. Later, two saddle horses were found running loose, so it would seem the attempt had failed. And the girl? Still missing. Uh, thought to be somewhere close in hiding, and they'll be looking for her, Brother Cadfile. Now more than ever. Good night. I'm ordered by his grace to require a tithe of your stores and any horses not already in the use of people in his grace's commission. I'm also commanded to search and inquire everywhere for the girl Godith, daughter of his grace's traitor, Fulk Aideny. There's nothing here. I told you, there's nothing here. And where are you, child? Godric! What's the matter? Not Godric. A fine weapon. Keen edged, well balanced. Where did you find it? In a fishing hut along the water meadow. Seemingly long abandoned. But there were tracks suggesting someone had been there of late. Be easy. She's safe. In my house. Praise to God.
as you stand. Let no man move, for the lady's sake. Be easy, Tolo. Do as he says. Brother Catfile speaks wisely. What is your will, Master Beringer? You mean to stand on your rights and marry me? I admit, I've never felt so tempted to marry you before. But no. Then I'm just the means to buy your way into Stephen's favour. In a manner of speaking, yes. You came here to find horses. Well, here they are. You may ride as soon as you please. We can go. Yes, and swiftly, if you'll take my advice. However, you'll ride the faster if you lighten your load. The saddlebags that Brother Cadfile so negligently obscuring, those I'll keep. By way of momentum of you. My sweet God. I have mistaken you, Hugh Beringer. You had a right to try for this prize. It'll go some way towards blunting his grace's rage when I tell him, despite my very best efforts, I couldn't find you. Well, there's no help for it. They're yours. Now mount and good speed. Brother Catfell, everything I owe to you. She's in your care now, but as a sacred charge. So beware of taking advantage. You'll miss her like a fiber gone from my heart. Oh, you carried this on your back all that way. Well, you saw me do it. Here, let me give you some love. Would you like to taste my wine? Oh, gladly. And I'll drink to your better success against all opponents but Hugh Beringer. Yes, at least the mercenaries missed. And I've been commiserating with you all this time when you had this in store for me. A fool I was to think I could out-trick you. Now I'll drink to your better success against all opponents but can't fail. How was this done? I, I swear I never took my eyes from you. You did draw up what Torrell had drowned in the river. I heard it rise. So I did. And then I let it slip in again, softly. This I already had in the boat. The other, Goddess reclaimed this morning. But th then where is it? They departed empty-handed. Well, on the way to the Grains, I suggested that they might the sooner reach their mounts if they left their load in the stump of a certain oak. By now, I hope, it's been retrieved and it's with them, safe in Wales, where Stephen can no longer reach them. My treasure. Well, I mean, the stones and sacks, that I understand, anything to make like for like, but... Uh, what are these things? They're the clothes Faintree was wearing when he was strangled. You put these together for me to see and recoil at my own guilt. I understand that I might well be suspect, Cadfile, but do I seem to you a man who would kill in so foul a way? There's little I would put out of your scope. But killing by stealth? No. That I would never look for. No, there's nothing here to shake you. Or for you to recognize. Recognize? No, not that. But this. This, after a fashion, I think I may know. Yes. This came from the hilt of Giles' dagger. Where did you find it? At a certain barn in Frankwell. How did it come to be there? That is not certain. Yet. If we may keep the stone for the present. You. If there's something I should know, you will tell me, won't you? 
What could I possibly hide from you? Giles killed Faintree. Must she bear that too? No, 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 never fear. There's no guilt there to touch Aline. Her brother was already dead. Several hours before Faintree was murdered. And whoever killed him first robbed Giles' corpse and then went through Faintree's ambush wearing the dagger he'd stolen. Yet how did he learn of the plan? Well, perhaps one of the rebels tried to buy his own life by betraying Catalan's treasury. But who? Which of them? Look, time is against us, Catfile. After tomorrow, Stephen marches for Worcester and our murderer with him, most likely. Our murderer? <sighs> Look, I, I know you can work miracles, Catfile, but even you would be hard-pressed to find this killer alone by tomorrow night's feast. Now, together, we can cover twice the ground. But even once the king puts his town behind him, he's going to forget about Faintree. Now, we stand side by side on this, Catfile, or not at all. You go to the castle, see what you can learn. I'll go to the siege camp and do likewise. And remember, Hugh, the dagger. Everything turns on that dagger. Find it, and we find our murderer. Cadwell, how did I come by this cloak? Arms from a gentlewoman. Then he that wore it before me is surely dead. Yes, he is. The lady you sent it is his sister. And trust me, her giving blesses the gift. I have seen him alive. <laughs> That's just an effect of the tincture. Oh, this was no dream of poppies. I saw him living. This cloak about him. I beg an audience with the king. It was dark and I was cold. It seems to me, the night before the castle fell, he came here. <laughs> Giles was at the king's camp. Immortal dread. He came to the besiegers. Offering Fitzalan's treasure in exchange for his life. But his treachery fell victim to a greater. And the betrayer himself was betrayed. By who? Uh, could it have been Corsell? Why do you pick his name above any other? Well, he was at the camp. Well, so too was Prescott. Ten height, so was the king. But he can give no account for himself the night of Fentry's murder. Nor can you. We cannot accuse him simply because he's your rival for Aline's affection. However... If you were to say that Giles was brought before the officer of the watch that night to state his business, and that that officer was Corsell, and then if you were to remind me of the horror that fell on him when Aline found Giles among the dead, then I'd say you have grounds for suspicion. You are ahead of me, Cadfile, even in this. Remember what he said? I would have saved him for you, no matter what the cost, or he realized what he'd done. God forgive me, he said. But he meant, Aline, forgive me. And he returned the cloak to her. But if he was so taken with remorse, why didn't he surrender the dagger also? Well, how could he? It was already broken and incomplete. But if his eyes were on the greater prize, why should he have stolen it in the first place? Well, no thief would willingly give up the chance of adding so valuable a bonus to his spoils. But you see, when Tollard escaped from the barn with Fitzalan's treasury, that dagger became Corsell's sole reward for murder. Then where is it? I, I mean, I, I've searched this castle from Bailey to Dungeon. There's no sign of the thing. Now, would it keep it in hiding or get rid of it? Well, whichever. It's still our only proof. Without it, we have nothing, as you well know. Then how are we to do that? I mean, if we accuse Corsell and come to trial, everything will come out. And though I have little affection for one who would betray his comrades at the last gasp, I would not see Aline wounded by this, now or ever. And therein lies our weakness. Yes, and perhaps our strength. Where would he stand with Aline whenever this came out? No. No, he may only have half an attack, Cadfile, but likewise he may only field half a defence. 
I do understand your preoccupation, but I will not let Faintree lie uneasy for want of justice. Brother, we are called to bring wine. Catfile, time is running out. Uh, well, at worst, we can put what we've found to Prescott, see what he advises, but for the present, do nothing. a matter on which I beg you'll hear me and do right. Well? There is one in this company who has abused his position in your confidence. By what means abused? He has stolen and he has murdered. <gasps> I stand ready to prove my claim and I offer this stone in evidence. Oh. Silence! You will need to explain much, Beringer. What is this trinket? It is the tip of a dagger hilt, Your Grace. The dagger itself was stolen from the body of Giles Seawood. That stone was found at the site of Nicholas Faintree's murder. Found by who? By Brother Cadfile, Your Grace. He will testify that the man who stole the dagger is the same man who killed Nicholas Faintree and that he left behind him this proof of his guilt. This man, you say he is with us in the hall? Your Grace, on a charge of theft and murder, I accuse Adam Corsell. What is this villainy? How does my name come into such a dire tribe? The villainy is yours alone and you will hang for it. Your Grace, these are the ravings of a man poisoned by jealousy. He envies me both your favour and Mistress Seward's affection. He is destined to enjoy neither. And why should he, when the one simple task you set him, to find his intended bride, Prove too difficult. <laughs> Draw steel, Beringer. I'll kill you where you stand. Enough! Do you deny these charges, Adam? Absolutely, Your Grace. If Beringer has evidence, let him produce it. Your Grace, I have offered this stone in evidence. Corsell has stolen! Oh, come! This bauble is nothing! When did I ever see this supposed dagger? When was it ever seen in my possession? Search the belongings I have here. If such a thing be found, let me know it. Your Grace, Brother Cadfile will back me in my claim. Is the monk present? Your Grace, I brought him with me. He's obviously thought better of involving himself in such madness. There is no dagger. Beringer stands alone on this. Your Grace, I would ask you to match stone to dagger with your own hands. There's no doubt this belongs. But whose word have we this is Giles Seward's weapon? The word of Lady Aline herself. A fair witness. Why do you suppose it to be Adam? There doesn't appear to be a single thread to link him with dagger or deed. I'm glad your grace put so firm a finger on the crux of the matter. There is no witness can put the weapon in my hand. Your grace, there is a witness. Boy! Now, I want you to explain to the king how you came by your knife. I was fishing under the castle, and man came down and threw it in the river. He didn't see me, but soon as he went, I dived in and got it and kept it, since he didn't want it. Do you know this man? Not his name, only to look at. Is he with us in the hall? That was the man. <gasps> Move aside, Hugh. Your Grace, this is utterly false. Do you say the child lies? At whose instigation? At Beringer's, Your Grace. He seemed as taken aback by the witness as you were. 
Am I to suppose the Benedictine order procured the boy to put up such a story? Your Grace, I refute these allegations utterly. I maintain them. You have put a millstone round my neck when most I need to move fast. Your Grace, this must be some foolish error. What possible reason could I have to kill Faintry? Well, you murdered him so that you could lay hands on Fitzalan's treasury. What treasury? Oh, my lord, I have learned that Fitzalan sent out couriers to get his treasury away to the Empress. Faintry was one such courier. Captain Courcel knew the route he was going to take. So he lined the road with caltrops. This is a nonsense! How could I be privy to the rebels' plan? That information was given to you. By one whose courage failed him at the last. Oh, no, we agree. In fear of his life, he offered up Fitzalan's treasury. Oh, I beg you. That he might be spared. Your Grace, there'll be no delay. If you will countenance trial by combat. There is my gauge. I stand ready to prove my charge against Corsell with my body. Well, since you both seem determined to destroy yourselves, tomorrow then, one or other of you in the castle courtyard shall have justice. I'll see that you don't fail me. No, Dread. I shall never be readier, and your arm will be seconding mine. Yes, at every stroke. Give him no call to Hugh. And if you get the chance to finish him, strike swift and clean. I trust I've proven my case. Your opponent proved it for you, all too well. But you have robbed me of a deputy sheriff. I may take reprisal by drafting you into the vacancy. What do you say? I'm Hugh Beringer. 
Deputy Sheriff, at your grace's service. Give it to Aline yourself. But deal generously with the boy who fished it out of the river. Is this justice? To force into the light the truth of one man's sins and cover the guilt of another? Aline knows half the tale already. You might set her mind at peace with the rest. There's no need for others to know. Let them count Giles among the many who chose the wrong side and died for it. We deal with what is. Leave what might have been to eyes that can see it plainly. A Nancy plainer than yours. Yet I do think at first you mistook me for a villain. I think we mistook each other. I would know more of you, Cadfile. In this new town of mine, I shall need a good friend. And I could look for none better than a rare Benedictine. Then in this ending, there is a beginning also. And that is as it should be.